The Chicago Bulls have started their first three-game win streak of the year. What does that mean? How have they changed their style of play to be able to get to this point? What's been the positives? What's been the negatives even with this improved play? We're going to talk about all that, plus dive into the mailbag and answer your voicemail questions. We're going to get into all that and more on today's Chicago Bulls Central. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. All right, Bulls fans, so we're riding a three-game win streak into the weekend. We face the um, the Houston Rockets the day after Christmas, so the Bulls have a couple of days off, and they'll be back at home until the ending of the year. They don't play another game out of Chicago, I believe, until January 2nd. So the Bulls have a nice little stretch in which they get to stay home, play their next four games at home on top of that, and let's see what that does to continue this improved style of play from the Chicago Bulls. Now, the Bulls beat the Knicks last night, getting their second revenge game, and this one came on a last-second bucket by DeMar DeRozan this time. Yeah, the Bulls make us sweat for it. The Bulls make us feel it and get nervous. But the improved play from the Chicago Bulls has been something noticeable. It hasn't been all sunshine and rainbows. It hasn't been all perfect. They have moments of kind of defaulting back to the heavy isolation ball at times over the course of this stretch. But they're able to come back as a team. One of the biggest differences in the Chicago Bulls play that has got gotten them to the place of having this three-game winning streak is not only the big three playing like a big three, all being over 20 points per game in the last four games in a row, but on top of that, um, it's the defensive effort that this team is giving, the rotating out on the three-point ball. Yeah, there are times where they they still give up a, a nice amount of threes. Let's not act like they're, they don't, but they do have a better effort of getting out, rotating out on there. The heads up on defense a lot more. We're seeing Zach Levine having his best game of the season, I think, in this game, not only just because of scoring over 30 points in this game, but the brand of defense that he played and how he was able to play a little bit better defense on R.J. Barrett, who was really hot and killing the Bulls all last night. Ayo DeSumo, good defensive effort uh, guarding Jalen Brunson in this game, not making him a complete non-factor, but just making him have an inefficient night, especially versus what he put up against us in the last game. All these things play a part in the win for the Chicago Bulls in this game, and it's great to see um, DeMar getting in Brunson's head as well on those last free throws, walking by saying something to him, Zach Levine hitting the two clutch buckets that he hit in the fourth quarter of that game. Um and, you know, it's just it's just been really good. We even got to see a lineup that some of you guys have been asking to see. Now, I don't think it's going to be a lineup we still see often, and that was Drummond and Vooch together. And in their over 11 minutes together on the court, they were only negative two in those minutes. You would like to see that be positive. But, again, re- the rebounding, how they really nullified uh, Hartenstein when they, were, when they were both out there on the court together. And I don't think that that – yeah, it, it, it changed – it clogged up the lane a little bit. It affected the spacing a little bit, but not as much as I – Thought that it was going to, though. Again, small sample size to see in that. And it's not necessarily a lineup I think we're going to see a lot of um, this season. But when you look at, like, Milwaukee, when you look at Philly, when you look at uh, even playing uh, teams like this again, and maybe even, you know, when Robert Williams comes back with the, with the Boston Celtics, even though we match up pretty well against them, maybe it's something that we can use just in specialty type times. And I tell you what, being able to go to that lineup and at least not think it's going to be a huge deficit You may even see it a little bit if the Bulls do end up making playoffs, depending on who that matchup ends up being for the Chicago Bulls. So the Bulls are starting to learn and develop some things. We're even seeing Billy Donovan adjust better over the stretch than what he has. And, you know, while some, and we got a voicemail on it from Ricky Carroll, like to stir up the drama in this team, I do think that in the time period of since that team had that team meeting at halftime in the blow-up or whatever else, they've been playing better team basketball. And that's what's going to be the key to the Bulls. It's not defaulting back to the your turn, my turn, your turn between DeMar DeRozan, Nikola Vucevic, and Zach Levine. We need these players firing on all cylinders together and playing like an actual big three, but not only playing like a big three, leading the team. I said it last night on the post-game show is that there's a difference between being a reason the team wins and trying to be the reason the team wins. And I think we're starting to see that the players understand that as well. Being in the team, playing amongst the team, being a part of the cog that makes this team be so successful. And we're seeing that from our big three. And finally, our big three playing like a big three is really taking the team to new heights, new levels. We're starting to see how this team is bonding together in those moments. And seeing that that level of play is what could help the Bulls sustain a level of play, sustain 
gain the identity to really get them to higher places in this season. Like I said, the big three playing like a big three. Good to see DeMar DeRozan getting in Vooch's head. Zach Levine making two clutch buckets as well. And, you know, that's in last night's postgame show. It's brought some fans to ask, should that last play have been ran for Zach Levine? Should that have been ran for Zach? And while I do understand it, right, I completely understand the mindset behind it. Zach, who was cooking, who led the team with 33 points, who also played a really good defensive game, especially when he was switched on RJ Barrett, just how, how much that changed the dynamic of that game in places. But still, Zach, DeMar DeRozan is the best bad shot maker in the NBA. And what we saw this Bulls team do, and Billy Donovan do to his credit, that was basically the same exact play that they, the same exact play that they ran on for the game, the game winning shot. They ran that play, a play before that, but it went to Zach Levine, and Zach Levine hitting a, a good mid range shot there. So it was the same exact play with different branches off, but. As, as what you're going to use DeMar DeRozan for, he's been the king of the fourth. Yes, DeMar is clutch. He has an ability that's just special to hit tough shots. And I think right now, Billy Donovan does trust DeMar more in those positions. We'd like to see it go. But what we saw down the stretch of the game left a lot of promising. They ran a play for Patrick Williams for an open three. It was a pretty good play ran for Patrick Williams. He didn't make the shot. Zach, we end up getting the rebound, and Zach hits a mid-range shot to put us down by one. But we did see down the stretch of that game, Billy Donovan be, be less reluctant to use other players in those stretches and how it definitely paid off for the Chicago Bulls in those areas. We're starting to see that identity form for the Chicago Bulls. And we have a voicemail on that later, so I'm going to let that sit there. But we're just starting to see a better level of play and our stars playing like stars, our big three playing like a big three, putting the team on the back and leading in the way that this new play style has worked for the Chicago Bulls as they continue to build in and trust that muscle of, hey, we need to play as a team. We need to do that. Those are the things that are really helping this team hit the new heights that we need to see. This team playing better as a team, getting better results in it. Because I tell you what, the Bulls have a tough stretch leading um, from the from the 2nd of January um, until the 15th of January. The Bulls have probably their toughest stretch of the season left. And with this new level of play that we're seeing from the Chicago Bulls, this new team-based, tough defense, rotating out of the three-point line, playing not playing the greatest lockdown defense or anything like that, but they're playing with heart defensively. And as this Bulls team is doing are doing those things more consistently and getting better results, how we come out of this stretch in January, from the beginning of January to the middle of January, that may be what tells the story of our season, right? I've said it before and I've fought against the Bulls fans that have been in the comments and think, hey, it's been all over because it hasn't been all over. But if the Bulls have in, the, in those, what, 13 days, in that middle, that from the beginning of January to the middle part of January, if they do not have a solid record, if they lose more of those games than not, that's where we may be talking about this Bulls season being kind of the story being written on it. Yeah, there's still enough time to maybe after the, the all-star break and the trade deadline to do some things, but I tell you what, as the season gets easier for the Chicago Bulls, if they don't, if they can't keep this level of play, if they can't keep this team-based style and go back to heavy isolation ball when they start facing some adversity and facing better teams back to back to back, that's a murderer's row of games for the Chicago Bulls with only a few games in between there that, that are at least scheduled as easier games. But again, with this Chicago Bulls team, they've not played consistently enough to even bet on those easier games being easier games. So because of that, you really have to look at this team and, and figure out like, if this team, whatever identity they're building, whatever identity they're crafting, whatever they're doing in the locker room and how they're playing better as a team and teammates and the coaching staff is coaching better, if it continues and hold true and you still get results from that in that January schedule, I think we're going to be good money, people. I think we could look at it buying, being by the middle of January, being back at, if not above 500, if this team takes care of business against the teams they should take care of business about and continue looking more formidable against the better teams in the NBA. This team, this win against the Knicks is not a win that be that should be easier, easily overlooked because at the end of the day, the Knicks, who are streaking, who won seven out of their last 10, right? Well, should have been, could have be on an eight game winning streak coming into this game. This team has been playing great basketball. And while the Bulls didn't beat them handedly or anything like that, they won the game and they played solidly throughout that game. That's what we need to see from this team. I hope that level of play continues and they keep holding themselves accountable. The lineup with Dr uh, with Drummond and Vooch not being something that's that was terrible either. They were negative two in the, in the minutes that they played together. If that continues, if that's something you can use against some of the teams you just have matchup issues against in a little bit of stretches there, that's another level that this team may have unlocked and may, and may have been able to 
you know, use in, in better times. And so I love the way that this big three is coming together, which now raises the question, should the Bulls still look look to move on from one of these big three? And I think, you know, conversations have started down in the G League showcase, not to say that just for the Bulls, but I'm sure some of the, the wheels got to turning on some deals down there. And as the Bulls do look to improve this roster, and still we still have areas we absolutely – that are holes on this team that we would love to see filled, whether it be it by trade or acquisition or whatever it, it ends up doing. This Bulls team hopefully is still looking at all deals, but maybe that that move of the big three, maybe with this improved level of play leading into January, maybe if they make it out that stretch of January still looking like a formidable big three, we may see that Vooch extension. We may see a, a move not made between one of them. Or the better play between them, maybe have up some trade value. Like, I know the fans are going to be thinking about that all the way, but – you got to look at this team and the, and the way they've been playing. And at some point, AK and Eversley still have to make the decision. How do we improve this roster, not only for now, but in the long haul as well? Okay, enough of me from that one. Let's go ahead and get into the voicemail. This first voicemail, this one's from Ricky Carroll. How you doing, brother? Hey, this is Ricky Carroll. I was sitting here watching the game tonight, and I was watching how the Bulls were playing, you know, and once again, they didn't get a couple of calls, so they started backing up off the ball. You're not going to play for Billy, okay? You're not going to play for somebody if you get hurt or something happens to you, they don't stand up for you. I'm sure you don't play ball before. And uh, you you can feel that if you got that, you bust your ass for this coach, and he don't even stand up for you. It takes the spirit out of it. Why do you want to get hurt for somebody? Who you're killing yourself for, and they won't even they won't even bury you. They just move to the next person. I hope you understand what I'm saying. And uh, they don't follow up shots. They got to be the worst team in basketball, man. Shooting and following up your shots. They don't do it. They don't help out on defense. Our bigs, all of our bigs. Sometimes I like they they wear cement shoes, and uh, Billy just ain't worth you getting hurt for, bro. Tell me what you think about that. Peace. And Ricky Carroll has been very consistent in his critique of Billy Donovan. If you guys have listened, it's been over a year now. Ricky Ricky, Ricky Carroll's been calling in. I think and he's been very consistent. He doesn't like Billy Donovan. He doesn't like the way Billy Donovan leads as a head coach. And I can understand some of that frustration. Now, I do think that Ricky Carroll and some other fans do do the dr dramatization of sports some, and it becomes their soap operas, right? Because you just buy into it. Ricky Carroll had another voicemail that I'm not going to play. I'm just going to kind of combine them and talk about him here on Zach and Demar not. Getting along, and I do think that the the like just because you have issues with your brethren because you're losing, right? That's where the issues boil down to. The the team was not happy because they were losing, and being sitting in that, thinking about that, you start thinking about things you're not doing, things other players are not doing. So it's good that they bumped heads. But to say that the, to to keep pushing this narrative that Zach Levine and Demar Derozan don't get along, we gotta stop that. We gotta stop adding so much drama as grown ass men to sports. They get along. Did you not see them celebrating together right after that game winning shot? Did you not see hell? Zach Levine's one of his biggest buckets of the game came off a of Demar Derozan assist. This team likes each other. It's just the fact that they were frustrated with losing, as they should be. And when you're frustrated and losing, when you play sports, since that's what you wanted to ask, Ricky Carroll, when you play sports, you should be able to look at your brethren and say, hey, listen, you're fucking up here. But guess what, brother? I got you, and we're going to fix it together. That's what this team is starting to do. That's what this team is building their identity towards, and hopefully they can continue to do. But we got to stop adding so much drama to shit. Now, as far as the Billy Donovan part of it, I do think that there is frustration with Billy. There is, should be frustration with Billy, his rotations, his lack of adjustments. But we've seen lately as well as we're talking about the improvement from players, we're also seeing improvement from Billy Donovan. He's used this challenge more in the last four games, I think, than he did in 30 games last season, doing that a little bit more. I've seen Billy Donovan talking to refs a little bit more. we got to stop expecting people to be out of their personality there. Yeah, Billy's never going to be the rah-rah head coach. That's just not how he's going to be. But he do, he can be more tactful in the way that he goes out and or tactician in the way that he goes out and uses the challenges, the way that he goes out and calls timeouts, the way that he does and uses rotations. We're starting to see Billy Donovan 
be better with the adjustments. Even playing Vooch and Drummond together is a huge thing of what he said coming into the season. He did not want to see, right? He did not want to play those guys together. So him coming off that and playing it in a stretch where it was successful for the Chicago Bulls, I think Billy Donovan's realizing he has to step up a little bit more as well. We have to hold the head coach accountable just like we got to hold the players accountable. I don't think it's as much drama. I think a lot of that drama is rooted in losing. I think a lot of that drama was rooted in losing. And if this team is playing better and getting the better results, I think we're going to see a lot of that calm down and this team play and continue to play more like a team. All right, let's get into this next voicemail. This one's for Michael Korn. Hey, Hayes. Uh, Michael Korn here. I just uh, finished listening and enjoying your last uh, show this morning about the Bulls not showing many reasons to give us fans hope. Uh, you nailed it on the head. Um, the one thing I wanted to – point out is uh, the team just has no personality. They talked about continuity. They talked about identity. But just feels like the Bulls players these days, w- there's no personality. They're, they're a joyless, you know, they're joyless. And I have to say that comes uh, from leadership. Uh, Billy Donovan's not a very passionate person or doesn't show any passion. Um, you know, AK uh, and, and Eversley, um, they are, they're kind of detached. Their personalities, but maybe that's how they have to operate as uh, a front office. But they show absolutely no passion or sensitivity to the passion of Bulls fans like you and many other of your listeners who are just, like, so livid. Uh, by the way, I think my, my favorite mailbags when you uh, listen to uh, – is Goon, A.K. Goon. I don't recall uh, the first name, uh, but absolutely, you know, spot on 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 what is being said. But I think the personality here is an issue, Um, you know, that uh, joyless, detached personality that lacks any kind of imagination or passion, or at least that's what it feels like. That's what it seems like. And I, I think Bulls fans have to recognize that our front office is handcuffed. And I see this with the White Sox. You know, I'm not a Jerry Reinsdorf hater by any stretch of the imagination. I, you know, I just that it feels like both White Sox GMs, Bulls GMs, uh, there's just an air of dysfunctionality just because, uh, you know, spending is a real issue. The fact that we couldn't. Uh, spring for anyone who could shoot. Uh, you know, I like uh, Goran. I actually like uh, Drummond as well. But, you know, where's the team really bringing in the pieces that it needs? And uh, I like DeMar DeRozan. Uh, but when you see the Bulls giving up 150 points to, uh, you know, the Timberwolves, that's just not only unacceptable, it's it, uh, – uh, just really, you know, pinpoints that, as you say, the shift is sinking. And uh, another water analogy will is uh, many times we need the courage. All right, and Michael Corn with a great voicemail here, um, talking about the Bulls have no personality. I kind of linked that back to the identity. The identity of this team was supposed to be putting together in the offseason. The identity of this team was supposed to be putting together in training camp. We all saw that video because I posted it here. Of, we got to build an identity. That was Billy Donovan. Even the even the snaps. That was him doing that. I'm I imitated him. Uh, he, w- that we had to do that. And we just didn't do it. We didn't do that in there. But we're starting to build that now. The Bulls players, like I said, not playing the best lockdown D, but giving that effort on D. The biggest thing that I have been harping on in my frustration with the team the last couple of months has just been the team not playing with a consistent level of heart and desire. We are starting to see that, yes, they still have lapses defensively. They still give up big stretches, but we're seeing them rebound from that better than what they have in any part of the season. Being able to lock in defensively. Zach Levine playing one of his better defensive games. Kobe White and his defense off the bench. Even DeMar getting involved in the defense in this game. That is the thing. When you have those players that are playing active like that, 
I do think that that personality, that identity is going to start being built. And keep in mind, we played, we've played, we been improving defense with missing Javante, missing Derrick Jones Jr., missing Alex Caruso, who while not stars on this team at all, they are definitely tone setters on the defensive side of the ball. They absolutely change the energy when they come into the games. And so for the Bulls to be able to maintain a level of defensive effort without those players, I think is kind of going overlooked and how important it is. So hopefully the Bulls are coming on the other side of that. That identity that we need and wanted and deserve to see them build, the identity that even the players talk about is something that we're starting to see and let's hope that it continues all right let's get into this next voicemail this one's from brandon l jet the og good morning Hayes. what's going on this is brandon l jet leave you a mailbag real quick i just wanted to share something with you in regards to the bulls as a whole now i watched the game between them and the timberwolves and what i saw was a team that didn't offer no resistance on like the defensive end. When I saw them, the Timberwolves got whatever they wanted to do. And I've been seeing this for the last couple of games that these Bulls don't have no resistance in regards to the defense. Defensive end, they don't play with any type of urgency upon on that side of the court. They don't communicate with each other very, very well, and they don't play for each other. I also saw Billy Donovan's press conference that happened last night. And he literally explained the same exact thing. He didn't take no accountability for himself to have this team prepared. He didn't make any in-game adjustments. Now, I'll give him credit that he did make a switch to different coverages as far as zone and pick and roll coverages. But it's like this team just doesn't want to play for him anymore. There is something going on that we cannot figure out that's going on up in that locker room. And I've noticed a pattern that ever since the announcement was made that his contract was extended for several years, quietly, his team has lost his will to even listen to him. Bobby covered it last night as well when he put his hand in for a team camaraderie. He only got two hands with one hand. That clearly shows you from a vantage point that this team does not want to play for this man. Now, I could be 100% wrong, but maybe, just maybe, this team, he is slowly losing his locker room game after game after game. And something needs to happen. AK and Mark Eversley need to address this. Some way, somehow. I don't know how it's going to happen, but something needs to be addressed. Because even the players said last night that us fans do not be, be our own a better product as far as these moves. They are not playing well. They aren't even trying on a defensive end. And it has been a major shift between that game where they played incredible against the Bucks and what we saw last night. What do you all say? All right, and uh, uh, but Brandon Eljet, more frustrations with Billy Donovan. Completely feel you. Uh, I said it before. Billy Donovan is probably the best gaslighter in all of sports because he always says the right things, and we rarely see them out there on the court. But we're starting to see them now, right? We're starting to see a Bulls team that is hitting their threes at a better rate. We're starting to see the Bulls team that is starting to, yeah, they still give up some good three point uh, shooting uh, percentages and stuff. But we're starting to see them run out, close out on that three point line, def- defend that three point line much better than they have at points in the season. We're starting to see that listen Billy Donovan it it, like the accountability for Billy Donovan cannot be overlooked at all either right and that's why I am going to notice that he is using timeouts better that he is using his challenges better and that he has some some, sometimes your, your coach is your leader I think at a time where the Bulls weren't playing with the identity that they wanted and deserved, that was time for Billy Donovan to grab the bull by the horns and kind of lead this team and set a different tone, and he didn't necessarily do that. Are we starting to see the the beginnings of that now? Possibly. Hopefully it is something that's consistent, but Billy Donovan can't be, like, extension aside, I understand the the issues with Billy Donovan. He was extended. He probably is going to be here for a while, but that still does not eliminate the concern from Billy Donovan doesn't eliminate the being held accountable for Billy Donovan. It should not eliminate Billy Donovan either being able to look at where areas that he needs to improve in his coaching philosophies. And I think we're starting to see that a little bit and hopefully it is. Now, Brandon Eljet also saying a change is needed. I still do think that we can't get caught up in these wins to still not realize that we still do have definite holes and areas of improvement needed for this team. And I do think that AK and Eversley 
are going to make some type of move. I don't know the level of move. I don't want to get to predicting that, but I do think something's coming. At least I hope it does because a trade in the right way, right? A trade to bring in the right piece, whether it be off the bench or anything else, that kind of just fits in and brings a lot of the things that we need. It may look minor, but it may pay off huge dividends for a team that just needs certain things. We need better shooting. We need more size in, in, in times and games. And, you know, while he did unlock something with Drummond and Vooch, that's still you want size that can also shoot and kind of space the floor at times as well. So let's see what let's see what AK and Eversley do because I do still think something is needed for this team as a little injection in the arm. I do think they're starting to build some of that up themselves, which is good to see. But we still need may may need something from the outside to come in and really help push this playoff push if the Bulls do truly get back in that race and in that battle. All right, let's get into the last voicemail for today. This one's from Shay. What's up, hey? This is Shay. You know. A lot of people are going to, because I was talking to some people, and they said that Patrick Williams is not having a good season stat rise, or he didn't take that jump that we needed him to. You know, I'm here to tell you I totally disagree, because although he's not averaging that much higher points than he did last year or the season before, I could say he's definitely taken a huge step in terms of, being a very important piece on our team because let's face it, he's given a lot of these guys in the NBA a lot of problems. And to me, honestly, along with Alex Caruso, I think he's became our defensive anchor. Now, look, I'm not saying that, oh, he's had the best statistical season, but you could honestly admit that he has become a very important piece on our team, even though he's been one. But I feel like he's definitely shown his importance and shown his potentials this year. So I think that he's uh, he's basically taking a step this season. Anyway, too much thing. Peace. All right. Is Patrick Williams having a good season? I think to say that Patrick Williams is having a good season is yes. He's not at all made the development that we've wanted, that a lot of Bulls fans wanted and expected to see, albeit some of that being a little bit unreasonable as far as the expectations around Patrick Williams to make a leap from year one when he only gets eight to nine. It really does feel like Billy Donovan has Patrick Williams on a nine shot uh, limit. Once he does his nine shots, it's like, don't shoot again, young man. Um, but Patrick Williams growing in, in the defense, growing in understanding how to use his body, growing in his ability to put the ball on the floor and get to the mid range. All those things are Patrick Williams is showing growth. Has he has he shown taking that leap? No, I think him or Io haven't really taken the leap that some Bulls fans, me included, may have expected one of them to make. I, I always said we need just one of them. I don't think that they made it, but even when you look at Ayo Desumu, Patrick Williams, and Kobe White, right? Those are the three that I'm going to focus on. Dalen Terry isn't playing. Marco Smolovich isn't playing. I'm going to focus on those three. Kobe White has made considerable improvements in his two-way game and philosophies. He's a better bench player for us. Ayo Desumu started off this season as our starting point guard, got demoted from that, had a stretch of bad games, maybe, maybe in a sophomore slump, but he still shows the flashes that remind us what Ayo Desumu could blossom and turn into for the Chicago Bulls team. Patrick Williams. You know, some Bulls fans, because he was the fourth overall pick, absolutely have this expectation that Patrick Williams needs to be averaging 16 points per game, and I understand that. But the reality of it is, if you look at it, he's not given those opportunities. But what Patrick Williams is doing better is not passing up as many shots. He doesn't always hit him at the clip that we would like, but he's not passing up as many shots. He's doing better defensively, understanding how to use his body better, especially off-ball defense and, and weak side defense and help defense. We're seeing those things grow. I gave the numbers before about Patrick Williams growing as a rebounder. He's not in position to get a lot of rebounds, especially offensive rebounds, because of where Do Billy Donovan has him playing out on the perimeter. But we are seeing growth from Patrick Williams. It just may not be that level of growth that most fans want to see from somebody who was a fourth overall pick. So I agree that Patrick Williams hasn't made the leap but I still, but I disagree with saying Patrick Williams isn't having a good season. He's having a good season. He's not having a stellar or great season. He's not having the season that many people thought he would be poised to make coming off the summer of working with DeMar DeRozan, but he is making improvements, and let's see how it continues to evolve, and hopefully he's garnering more trust from Billy Donovan as well so he can be more involved in the offense, and that's why I think we're going to see considerable growth for Patrick Williams. But that is it for me for today. That is the mailbag episode for today. We'll have another one tomorrow. Make sure you guys get your thoughts in down below. Low. You can also send in any feedback. We'll talk about that. Make sure you're following the show at Bulls Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, bullscentralpod at gmail.com. You can also leave a text and a voicemail to be read or played on the show like you heard today, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot 
for everything Chicago Bulls related because of you guys. And like I like to end every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. See Red, y'all. In peace. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Media. Media.